It's Jet Tila here, and today we're making one of my favorite defining dishes, Thai green curry. Um, fun fact, my family actually brought Thai food to America in the 60s, so uh, we are the true authorities. Let me show you how to make the best Thai curry you've ever eaten. Let's get into it. Thai curry is very simply Thai herbs made into a delicious aromatic paste and made into a sauce with coconut milk. The very simple way to remember it is, Indian curry is made with spices, cumin, coriander, pepper. Grind that into a powder and that's called a masala. Um, turn the masala into a liquid and that's a curry. In Thailand, totally different. Lemongrass, shallots, galanga, kaffir lime leaves, all fresh herbs smashed into a paste. This stuff right here. And then we're gonna make a sauce by using coconut milk. So I'm using lots of words. Let me show you some visuals to make it make sense, all right? Curry paste, you can buy this at the store and I'm cool with it, all right? I know a lot of chefs are trying to be like, I make my own curry paste. I'm like, big deal, do you make your own wine? It's probably not as delicious as the people who've been doing it for hundreds of years. So buy a good brand of curry paste, make sure it's made in Thailand. This is one of my favorite brands and you're good to go. So you've eaten red curry, green curry, Penang curry. Uh, let me demystify that, right? All curry bases are the same. Those herbs that I talked about, garlic, uh, shallots, kaffir lime leaves, lemongrass, that's a base curry. So if I smash into that base curry green chilies, guess what I've made? Green curry. If I switched out red chilies into that, I've made red curry. So that's it. I mean, that's kind of the, the nutshell. I'm making green curry today, but no matter what kind of curry you're making, the method is still the same. Let's get some prep done. I always love working vegetables to protein, uh, and we're gonna get that curry started. Uh, first thing, I have a sweet potato here. This can be subbed out for a potato if you want, but I do love kind of these kind of orange garnet color sweet potatoes. They're super, super sweet and delicious. They add a really nice dimension to curry. And look, if you're low carbing, ketoing, whatever dude, just uh, 86, uh, omit any of these starchy vegetables, sub for broccoli or any of those kind of um, other vegetables that you want. I'm simply peeling, I'm not doing anything fancy here. And then I'm gonna cut off the actual ends of the sweet potato. I like to clean as I go, as some of you already know that have cooked with me before. I want these sweet potatoes in small dice and the Jet Tila cutting rhyme. Tile becomes a slice, slice becomes a dice, and you're sick and tired of hearing that if you've ever cooked with me. So I'm gonna make a like three quarter inch tile. And from those three quarter inch tiles, I'm gonna make three quarter inch slices and then three quarter inch dices. It's very simple. So in three movements, you should have nice even cuts. And those rounded ends, don't stress, just cut those into dices, it's all right. There's half, tile, slice, dice. Think about that every time you're cutting and you'll always have perfect cuts. I'm gonna just slide these over and get them close to the pan. Next, onion. I cut every onion the same way. It's ritualistic, because I've cut a thousand of these. Take the tip of the onion off and cut off just a little piece of the root to flatten out the onion. North pole to south pole, and then always peel your halves. Don't try to peel the onion in a round unless you really are angry at someone and you can make them do it, but, but this really is the easiest way to do it. Okay, onions peeled. We've all cut sliced onions. I'm gonna show you another cut that I really love called the Lyonnaise. Take that root end off, just like that. Both halves, if you have them. And then lay your knife kind of parallel with the lines of the onion, okay? Um, and keep the edge of that blade pointed towards the core. Does that make sense? So as I'm kind of moving the, around the onion, the edge is point is always pointed towards the center of the onion. And if you do kind of quarter inch slices, always angling or pointing that edge towards the onion, check out what you've got. These beautiful Lyonnaise slices. And they're still slices, but I think these look a lot sexier in the pan, right? They cook up nice, you can saute them, you can do just about anything with the Lyonnaise. So as you get comfortable with that, it happens a lot faster. There you go, 
New Leonese cut, I've just taught you. New ingredient, kefir lime leaf. You know it's a kefir lime leaf when it looks like two leaves stuck together, just like that. This is a uh, Southeast Asian citrus, it's a lime. These are, they're extremely aromatic. They have this kind of lemongrass, kind of citronelle, citronella smell. So in order to unleash them, because they are kind of, you know, uh, woody, I'm gonna show you a very fun cut called the chiffonade. Now take your kefir lime leaves, your Thai lime leaves, and then roll them into uh, a nice tight parcel, okay? And then this takes a little practice. You're just gonna do a very fine slice. I want you to look down at what you're cutting. I have done this about a bazillion times. I wanna get it into the thinnest strips possible so they release all those essential oils and they actually cook in and don't try to get tough on your teeth, all right? And if you're like, yo, Jet, that scares me and I'm gonna cut myself, grab a pair of scissors, do the same thing and just use scissors, okay? They're very, very simple. But that's what you wanna do. Kefir lime leaves, if you get these and you're like, man, I bought like a pound of them because that's how they came at the Asian market, just throw the extras in the freezer and pull them right out of the freezer and they're good to go. So the, the secret to not hurting yourself is you use your guide hand, your non-dominant hand, always keep your fingertips curled under and never let your thumb protrude further than the lead fingers. And if you're doing that, you're never going to cut your fingers, okay? Because the two problems that people have is they keep their fingertips out, ouch, or they push their thumb too far out, and that's another ouch, so, so there you go. We're gonna use uh, these Thai kefir lime leaves for garnish and for cooking. I'm ready to get into the pan to kind of start this, because it's a two-part series. I need to get the potatoes boiling down, and then I'm gonna come back and finish with the other knife work. And the last thing that's gonna go into this kind of first simmer, the initial simmer, are these beauties. Oh man, I wish there was smell-o-vision. This is Thai basil. It smells like black licorice. It has kind of that anise flavor. It has a purple stem profile, and it has this incredible kind of a, a black licorice. And all you're gonna do is use the top. So don't get fancy on me here. You don't need to chiffonade or anything. Uh, bunch them up where the leaves start to meet each other, and you just give them a twist. That's what I want right there. And I want whole leaves. Just like, and you know the little uh, basil flowers, like these guys, like these little things? I use them. I think they're incredibly aromatic and they make for a really nice garnish. So I can't encourage you enough to like, Get in and smell your aromatics, especially in the Thai kitchen. This smells like anise. This smells like black licorice. There's so many floral aromatic um, compounds, these essential oils, and that really is the key to Thai cooking if you understand those. I'm gonna start by getting a saucepan uh, nice and hot. Remember, Thai curry is made with coconut milk, and the secret to getting perfect curry is don't shake the can of coconut milk. Even though the can actually tells you to shake well, don't do it. It's, it's, it's a trick, it's a trap, all right? So when you don't shake the can of coconut milk, the cream settles to the top and you get this unctuous, lovely, beautiful coconut cream. We're gonna use the whole can, don't worry. But I do, I have a specific job for this coconut cream and it is to fry up the curry paste. All right, so I'm um, adding a few tablespoons of just the coconut cream, I'm using it basically like frying oil. Uh, this is something my grandma taught me uh, a very long time ago to get the most aromatic quality. I'm gonna back that up with a little bit of neutral oil and I want um, vegetable or canola. You don't want olive oil here. And what I'm doing is frying up the curry paste. Now remember, this is all herbs and um, it's just like browning onions or browning garlic. You wanna cook it up first to really kind of break through all those layers of fiber, all the water that's in the herbs and pull out the essential oils. So as you can see, I really wanna smash. I'm really smashing this paste into the fat, almost like making a roux. It's critical to cook this step down. If you find that you have too much paste versus oil or coconut cream, just add more coconut cream. You do want this 50-50 balance of kind of this smooth roux or um, 
Uh, oh man, roux is gonna, like my favorite way to describe it, but if you've never cooked a roux, you want it like a thick, creamy base, wet enough to kind of push around and fry up. This is when your house smells like, like heaven, and people are like, what are you cooking? And you're like, no big deal, just the best curry that Jed Tila taught me. So I wanna really keep up with this. Um, this is where you get all the flavor. In Thai, we call this word kua, and kua means to cook all the aromatic essential oils out of this, and you actually want it to separate. You'll start to see the oil separating from the coconut milk, and that oil is simultaneously frying up all those aromatics. I'm really separating as much essential oil out of the curry paste as possible. So this is where you're gonna take your time. Everything else is gonna happen a lot quicker. All right, so um, let's fortify the flavors in here. Although there are kefir lime leaves that are ground in, we're gonna add more. We're gonna build more flavor. And we're gonna add onions right now. We know that sweetness of caramelized onions, we're gonna add that to this. And then we're gonna add some Thai basil. If you love a super green colored curry, take this curry paste, put it in a blender with a little bit of coconut milk and add a ton of basil, some green chilies, and then fry it up. And that's gonna give you that beautiful, super bright green curry that you get at some Thai restaurants. I don't think you need to do that. I really like more of a subtle color and that's why I like to cook it up this way. So again, patience is, is gonna be your friend here because the longer you allow this to cook down, the sweeter and more aromatic and, and the more round and full the flavor is gonna be. Onions are soft. I'm seeing some separation um, of the coconut milk and the curry paste, and that is telling me it's time to add the rest of the coconut milk. And this bowl is basically the coconut milk bottom because I've already taken off that kind of cream top, and I'm gonna throw that in there. And if you've noticed, we're not turning down the heat here, right? The entire key to a beautiful curry is texture. Now, we eat curry over rice, so you want the curry to be thick enough to coat rice. And the only way you're gonna get there is reduction. So we're gonna basically evaporate kind of the water out of the coconut milk, and what that's gonna leave you is that beautiful kind of thick curry that sits perfectly over rice. As this comes to a boil, I'm gonna add the sweet potatoes. Because they're tough, I want them to kind of soften a bit. I wanna to torture the sweetness out of them. If you're one to roast vegetables, this is also a great way to use up those roasted vegetables. I'm gonna bring this to a boil, reduce to a simmer to start thickening the curry. And uh, at the same time, these sweet potatoes are gonna to start to kind of soften. That looks awesome. All right, so I'm gonna leave that at a low simmer and kind of finish my prep. Just a few last things to cut. Uh, bell peppers. Oh uh, man, I'm gonna show you a really fun trick that all your friends are going to love. Uh, this is how I like to cut all bell peppers. Uh, least amount of waste and the maximum amount of cool. Start by uh, cutting uh, a tile off the back end, just like that and then turn and cut a tile off the front end, only about a quarter inch, because if you do it the right way, check out what happens. You pop uh, the stem right off and you've got 100% usable tiles right here. And this is where you're like, impress your friends. Slide the knife in down the bell pepper side, uh, turn it flat, and then just kind of move that knife back and forth as uh, around the seed pod and you get a clean seed pod Clean that. Ba -da -da. Anyway, no, really nothing up my sleeves. No, I'm kidding. It's that easy, guys. And just remember, a tile becomes a slice, slice becomes a dice. So I always start with tiles about 
uh, palm width. And I'm gonna go batonets. It's a very fancy French word for uh, little sticks like this. And I think that's gonna look cool. So let's do some batonets like that. And then uh, maybe I want some garnishes too. So, so batonets, zero waste on this bell pepper, by the way. And then I'll take this last um, piece and I'll cut a garnish out of it, okay? So uh, I'll start with the bats or the batonets, these quarter inch tiles, and then I'm gonna cut the quarter inch tiles in a quarter inch dice, so. So there you go. So I've got uh, bell peppers for garnish and I've got bell peppers for the actual body of the curry as vegetables. All right, don't say I've never taught you anything, okay? Let's give this a little stir to make sure we're always scraping the bottom so that thickened curry isn't sticking or burning. All right, potatoes, you good? You're good, okay, they're softening away. Whenever cutting raw chicken, use a separate board and a clean knife, okay? I'm using chicken thighs. I only eat chicken thighs. I don't like chicken breast. If you love chicken breast, I'm not mad at you, but I think thighs have uh, more flavor. They definitely have more uh, fat, which means tenderness. Switching hands, this is my chickeny hand, by the way. Um, and I'm always happy patting down uh, raw proteins. I'm always patting down protein because I don't want the extra liquid here to be messing with the flavors of a whatever I'm cooking. That goes away. And uh, for this dish, I'm always thinking about what am I eating curry with? What are the cuts of the vegetables? So my sweet potatoes are about this big. I don't want my chicken to be like obscenely large or obscenely small. So I'm just gonna cut strips. I'm gonna lay down the chicken thighs, and if, you know, for this one, I'm okay with trimming some of the, the skin off. Uh, and then what I'll do is just cut them into mm, about quarter to half inch lengths. And to me, uh, these will fit in a spoon very, very nicely. Any protein you cut uh, will shrink as you cook it. So start with something a little larger than you wanna end up with, all right? You wanna count for like 20% shrinkage. And uh, if my wife gets the heebie-jeebies from skin, just go to chicken breast, no big deal. I mean, don't serve me your chicken breast, but you can do whatever you want. I make chicken breast at home for my kids and my wife, so. Trimmy the skinny, and then I'll cut into lengths. Uh, also, don't be scared to use roasted protein. Like if I roasted chicken, or if you're trying to like, utilize that, that roast bird you get from the grocery store, just pull it apart and throw it in this curry. All the flavor is going to be in the curry. And uh, it's really going to season just about anything you put into it. So that chicken's done. I need to sanitize briefly. I'm looking for two things. One, the sweet potatoes to be soft enough to eat. Not too soft, not too firm. And two, I'm looking for the curry to be reduced down to that perfect texture. And uh, let me show you what that means visually. I'm looking for what the French call a nappe, right? Something that coats beautifully. So running a wooden spoon into the curry. I'm gonna pull a spoon out of the curry and then uh, let it cool a little so you don't burn your finger. Run a channel through it, and if it creeps across, if the curry creeps across that channel, it's too thin. So this is looking just about right, so I know I can add the rest of my ingredients. So I'm gonna bring the chicken to the curry. So what's essentially happening here is coconut is a healthy fat, right? But it is a fat. Um, and the nice thing about it is it's gonna poach this chicken really beautifully, right? Have you ever poached like lobsters in butter? Forget about it. It's really kind of the similar uh, texture you're gonna get. So this chicken, of course, needs to cook up. It's gonna get seasoned by the actual curry. Once the chicken is about all the way cooked, I'm gonna add the bell peppers. If I add them too soon, I'm gonna get soggy bell peppers and me no likey soggy bell peppers. Every time you add something to the pot that's cold, you're gonna lose a little bit of that simmer. So let's simmer this chicken up so it's cooked through. Uh, that'll take about five to seven minutes. So go ahead and hit pause right now and uh, join me again when you're ready. 
Welcome back if you've paused. If not, um, it's time to season this up and finish the curry. So Thai food is really a balance of five flavors. Hot, sour, salty, sweet, and savory. We call it the yum. And it's not a cheesy joke. Think about that Thai soup you love. Tom yum, uh, Thai beef salad, yum nua. It's actually a real word. So let me yum this up for you, okay? Hot, sour, salty, sweet. Hot's already in it. There was chili in the paste. Covered there. A little bit of uh, sugar, and that'll be our sweet. Not a lot, really. I just want to round the flavors out. I don't want to make my food sweet. And uh, fish sauce is the end-all, be-all of Thai cooking. This is going to give you the salt and also give you the savoriness, all right? Now I know, oh, it smells, but it tastes delicious. It only smells if you prank people like I've never done before. And finally, a little bit of sourness comes from tamarind. And a tamarind is a fruit that grows around the world, and this is actually tamarind juice. We take the fruit and make a little uh, concentrate. You don't need a lot. I'm just putting a tiny bit in there. Um, and that's gonna give you a slight acidity. So remember, hot, sour, salty, sweet, savory, that is the yum. Uh, I think it's all in there, but how do I know what this tastes like if I don't taste it, right? It's so crucial that you taste these dishes uh, as you're cooking and uh, before you serve it because you have one chance to make an impression and this is it. All right, so don't burn yourself. Get that curry. Mm. And again, you're looking for those five flavors and if you love heat, Go more hot. If you like salt, go more salt. I'm gonna go just a touch more on this one uh, because you usually serve curry with rice and rice in Thailand is not seasoned, right? So I want this curry on the edge of over seasoned. So by the time you eat it with a neutral rice, it's gonna taste perfect. Let's add some of those bell peppers right at the end because uh, these bell peppers are uh, mainly water and they cook up super quickly. They are sweet, but I don't want them to die in, in the pan, all right? And then check it out, I'm turning off my heat right as I add my bell pepper because the residual heat will be more than enough to cook it through. That is curry. So um, yeah, before I actually put the plate down, let me clean up a little bit here. I love to serve curry with jasmine rice. I really think um, that nuttiness, that floral quality of this rice is really the perfect accompaniment. I'm not mad at you if you use brown rice or any kind of grain um, <laughs> or even cauliflower rice, although that hurts my soul a little bit, I'll allow it. So uh, you always want to do a base of cooked warm jasmine rice. Now, not too much, right? Because you want enough sauce uh, to kind of enjoy this rice. You don't want the rice to kind of soak up all of this curry. I'm bringing my curry to the rice. What I want to do is get kind of a nice balance between the protein and enough of the gravy to go around. So I like to start with the stuff of the chicken, the bell peppers, the sweet potatoes. And then what I'll do is go in and get a little bit of the gravy and just kind of lay it over. Mm, awesome. And if your friends love more gravy, then go for it. But uh, let's do a little bit of the bell pepper to remind people what's in there for sweetness. A little bit of that chiffonade kefir lime leaf. I really love garnishing with items that are already in it because they make sense. And then let's find like the perfect basil pluge. Pluge is a fancy word for just the tops of the basil. And then we'll just stick that right in there and that'll just be a little call out to what's in it. So there it is, my friends. Probably the best Thai curry um, you'll ever eat made in the comfort of your own home. So there's the perfect bite to me, a little Kefir lime. Mm. Wow. Creamy, savory, with really good assertive heat. This is a dish that the Tila's brought to America over 50 years ago, and I hope it's a dish that you enjoy with your family. We'll see you later.